Okay, minerals. Top tips, simple reminders of what certain minerals do. So if I look at calcium, a uh, really important mineral, it's a macro or large mineral. Just remember, every time I'm going to remind you, that when we're looking at minerals, this curve here, deficiency, we have optimum levels is what we want, and then we can, some minerals we can go too far and give them too much. Uh, so what does the animal need? What does your herd or flock need? Remember, minerals are complex and they have interactions with each other. Measurement of what we're putting into the diet, so we need what we need to supplement and targeted and can be very farm specific. Um, so cattle and sheep, calcium plays a key role. Just quickly on sheep, it's pre-lambing that the issue is with, with calcium um, and we see sheep going down with low calcium. In cows, it's all around calving time, particularly when she's brewing colostrum and her other, you have an increased demand for cal calcium. Then when you think about milk itself being produced and how high that is in calcium, there's a massive demand at calving time until the, the cow starts to adjust where she can actually intake calcium from her diet. But she has very spe special mechanisms to do it and I'll talk about that in a minute. What does calcium do? Key role in muscle function, uh, key role in immunity amongst other things but that they're the important functions. So at calving and coming up to lambing time is there's a huge demand particularly in cows. Most of calcium is stored in bone and that's important to remember because there's a complex mechanism with a number of interactions where the cow comes up to calving, she pushes calcium from her bone into her bloodstream to meet this demand. And there's a number of things that influence that. So that's really important. So there's a huge requirement for calcium for in lactating animals, obviously, particularly when they're adjusting their diet to meet demands. So what are the clinical signs of milk fever or low blood calcium? Well, milk fever or hypocalcemia is what we call it, is when uh, cows go down before or generally after calving, slow, close to calving time purely from muscle weakness um, and you know that downer cow will you know you always and this is a key thing with minerals not everything is as simple and black and white not every down cow has got calcium but it's a key differential there so your downer cow she can often have a swan neck she'll be weak you know her rumen she can blow it slightly um, and really really they're, 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 they're an emergency you want to get calcium into them as fast as possible um, clinical signs I mean a cow with milk fever has been estimated just in euros between cost between anywhere between 300 and 500 euros for a case of milk fever because of long-term effects of it what's really important to remember though with calcium is Milk fever is an iceberg disease. We only see like one one case of milk fever. You probably have seven or eight or ten animals in the herd that have low blood calcium or subclinical hypocalcemia. And again, it's a key role in muscle function and immunity. So your freshly calved cows immune system is lower, you must think of the key muscles that are there. The stomach or rumen is a muscle. So affecting anything that affects dry matter intake is really important. Also, the womb itself is a muscle, so to uterus to clean out and involute, get, get back into, you know, get a cow back into that breeding cycle, um, really important. So subclinical hypocalcemia can be, work up to cases that can cost between 100 to 150 euros, we don't see this. So it's really important, you know, when you're talking about treatment of these animals, you really talk to your vet, but, you know, just be aware, you know, good management of minerals around calving time is key. And there's a number of factors here. Age of animals, older animals are more prone to. So if you have a breed, and certain breeds are more prone to, like jerseys. So if you have a really high risk animal, you might need to supplement with oral calcium, even at the point of calving. Then if you look at the herd, um, hypomagnesium, low magnesium pre-calving is a real issue because magnesium is involved in this complex process of kind of pushing calcium out of the bone. And there's a number of hormones involved in it, but magnesium plays a key role in that cycle. So, you know, particularly if you know that your diet is low in magnesium pre-calving, that's something you need to reverse. And also, we know in, in Ireland, in our traditional uh, grass-based systems, we give magnesium pre-calving because of that risk. Now we also have other minerals involved in that, like potassium, and potassium is quite high in grass-based systems because of slurry and fertilizer use, and that locks up magnesium, allowing, so hot, creates a, a risk for, for milk fever again. So there is complex interactions. Calcium itself in the diet pre-calving, if you have a high calcium diet, it does a number of things. It can affect the acidity of the rumen, but it also can affect, uh, make it alkalotic, but it also affects the in very simple terms, the cow is thinking, I have enough calcium here. And this, I, this system of flushing, what we call Krebs cycle, flushing Krebs cycle, flushing calcium from the bone, 
is actually uh, slowed down. So there's a, a number of things. And finally, we talk about DCAB, which is dietary cattle and animal balance, and that's the acid-base balance. So with acidic rumens and acidic blood, we can uh, flush, the, the cow will flush more calcium out. And again, if we have more alkalotic rumens, it slows that process down. So there's a number of things to consider. In an Irish system, what we find is hypermagnesium and high potassium are the key ones so we need to look at, and again, calcium. This can be worked out. Supplementation is key. If we can manage calcium, particularly around calving in the cow, we can make a phenomenal difference to the overall herd health and performance.